Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. So today, uh, Tim, it's not going to be there, so I will take the meeting notes. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see that. Oh, so can. Let's wait for just a minute or we can just start on. Okay, so let's start the meeting. I'll start recording. Oh. So I cannot record actually since I don't have the permission. I think it's already recorded. Yeah. Whenever someone joins, it automatically figures. Oh, okay, okay. I can, uh, I can see it's it's with the red dot as recording. So. Okay, perfect. If you can see okay. that, it's perfectly yeah. fine. Okay, sorry, I can see that too. It's on top. Yeah, perfect. Now. Okay, so it is April 3rd, 2024. We are here for the Oran uh, work group to Oran meeting. Uh, so the first thing I would like to do all of, uh, is, uh, does anybody have any problems for the meeting notes for the 27th of March? If no, then I can put them approved. If fine, then I can, I can put approved. So I think there's not, uh, there was no agenda for today as such. So... Uh, we're going to continue the discussion, which was uh, pending from last week. Right? So, should, okay, so should we go forward with the with the create KTS cluster user story? Yep, we can do that. I can yep. share my screen here. Okay. Just a moment. There you go. Just a moment. Okay. Can you see this presentation now? Yes, I can see that, yeah. So um, um, I'm jumping in into the slides we discussed last week where I got some uh, comments uh, uh, to do some updates and so on. Uh, so we have two parts. We have the, the template part um, um, where we have or yeah, the, the, this um, uh, nephew workload cluster kept package then that contains this workload cluster CR. Um, where we had a proposal then to uh, use that one uh, to carry um, both template-related data then, so that like in the example uh, packages, uh, you have um, a representation of what this uh, workload cluster is about uh, in terms of cluster template characteristics and cluster template metadata. Um, those are um, properties that has been defined so far in the uh, Oran Workgroup 6 uh, studies. 
Um, um, we have a cluster template input property, so you can define here like which input data that is like uh, required or supported um, by this particular for this particular cluster deployment. And then most important, then you have the uh, a name of the, the, the template itself. Then so um, call the cluster template ref. And uh, anyone have any comments or? Oh, no, okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's with me. I have. Uh, oh. I just raised my hand. So, yeah. so first of all, where is cluster input defined? Template input defined. The cluster template input. Is that a CR? Mm -hmm. So I'm coming. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I can show that page. Then we can go back to that. So uh, this is. Uh, this is the yeah, way so, so know. maybe two 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 comments right one is that the second is basically uh, today um, the template that we instantiate is coming from uh, is basically submitted through the package variant so in other words we do not submit a template within the request Right. The package variant is basically saying this, I want this template to be instantiated. And it also says the context that is needed. And then that's how we instantiate the package. We are not creating a template that refers to another. I mean, we use templates inside, but it's not for this purpose. And, and uh, the thinking here is that you so, more or so, less so it, will reuse so it, that, that approach. Yeah, so in other words, the way that today we in Nephew support instantiation of anything is by creating a package variant. And that package variant refers to a template or a package in our case. And then you have also what I call, I let's we'll come to that, but what I call the context uh, that mm. that uh, that is so in other words. We do not instantiate a template that refers to another template. So, so this is the way we propose now then what we um, discussed last week and how we could um, um, support the IMS interface. Uh, uh, so here you see uh, how this connects to what you said there, uh, Wim. Um, if you say that IMS here would be like a nephew uh, workload cluster, um, no, sorry, a nephew. So, so, this is a nephew management cluster. Yeah. See, in my view, the I mean, I it's like IMS gets a REST call, right? So you basically will uh, absorb it somehow. Let's say there is someone who picks that up, right? And that implementation that is nephew specific, if you will, right? That takes the request should create a package variant referring to the template that was instantiated inside of that uh, IMS request yeah, and provide then uh, what I call the context or the input parameters, which in our case is also a CR, that, right. Uh, right. that basically sets the specific parameters uh, to that, right? Yeah. Now there is, I think there is an important design consideration to make to make these inputs specific to a package. So we'll come back to that probably, but I think that should be the flow. So in other words, you get an IMS request uh, onto the O cloud, and then you, uh, that has a, a template reference, right? And then that will instantiate a package variant, which will consume that template as well as a particular context. Yeah. So, so the way so, we were thinking now, then, shall I just comment on that? Yeah, yeah go ahead, uh, Stefan. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, so if this is the uh, uh, IMS management cluster implemented according to Nephew, uh, the, the part here uh, to the left would then be the, the cluster template repo or blueprint repo where you have uh, what we now call a OCloud cluster template in kept package format. So this is like basically the nephew workload cluster 
um, a cat package, the example, in the, in the nephew example packages, you have that nephew workload cluster uh, template. Um, this one will then be uh, cloned um, into the cluster management repo in order to uh, um, create an instance specific package deployment uh, for a particular cluster. And here I, I use cluster one, then just as an example. Yeah. Um, this is done through the port operator. So as you say, here we are using package variants uh, in order to trigger the port operator to do like, this is like the source, this is the target uh, uh, package, this is the management repo you are deploying it in. Um, the new thing now then, what we have uh, considered is that this is what we are exposing today then, the port API uh, in, in Nephew. And uh, the idea here is that what we would then put uh, on top of this is um, an, an operator then, uh, that we would uh, use in order to support the OTIMS interface, where we introduce a cluster claim CR, like a CRD then defined that is supported by this OTIMS operator that defines this cluster claim. Uh, it has this uh, OTIMS API version still within the nephew domain. Uh, I mean, and the thinking here is that this should be possible to be evolved then into an uh, Oran uh, custom resource, so that we can why use this, a why, CRD. Why base. should this? Why should this be Oran specific, right? So this should be nephew defined because we have we, some of that we, right now. Yeah, we are aiming. Uh, to promote uh, this uh, um, approach with a CRD-based uh, uh, auto-IMS uh, API in uh, Oran. Um, yeah, and that's okay. But, this but, has uh, but, made a technical study on that. So this is basically following that proposal. Yeah, but first, I, so first of all, today that claim is not ending up in etcd, by the way. So that is not how we do right now. Plus, I think the operator that you're referring to, the only thing that should happen is basically creating a package variant. Mm, I think so. I think that is... It, it, but that's it, it, not at, what at I see here. Time. That's that's not what I see depicted here. So that's why my comment uh, is coming um, back. Well... It's more of okay. How you do this port clone update uh, 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 apply, right? I mean, it happens through a package uh, variant, right? Yeah. So it's a package yeah, variant. I, if you instantiate a package I, variant, uh, that's what happens. I can add that here. Uh, I I didn't uh, um, I didn't think I I I just did, did you, okay. I just do, did it as a, as a, um, like arrow directly here. Yes, this is uh, triggered by creating a package variant that the port operator will pick up. So I can add that. Here. Correct. So, and that's all we need, right? So, that's all that is needed here. Yeah, yeah. but that I, I don't describe more either. I mean, the thing is that uh, what we are exposing up here is uh, uh, an API then uh, that we are aiming to evolve into an auto IMS uh, standard CRD. So, the thing we have here then uh, for now in this uh, spec then is the cluster template ref. That is pointing which, uh, which, to the. Which should not be there, I think. Which should not be there, by the way, because you already put it. So if you look to how the package variant works, it basically says, here is my upstream. Yeah, but we, so don't, temp we, we are not uh, asking the client so, to send the package variant. A package variant. No, 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 no. no. Is, that happens, that happens inside of your operator, right? So your operator will create a package variant. Yeah. And that package variant. Has an upstream, which is the which is the template that you yeah. requested, right? Yeah. And has the context. So, in other words, in your cluster claim, you don't have to specify the template again. But but wait, it's already... not again. I mean, you say that you say the operator uh, needs to create the package variant. The, the package variant shall contain a, a reference to the cluster template, and, and that yes. needs to come somewhere from the, the operator. You can have uh, like uh, 20 uh, different templates here, right? For different. Yeah, correct. Clusters. But we don't, what I'm trying to say is that we don't have to specify them in the cluster claim, right? So that's no longer needed. Uh, I don't no, understand why you say uh, we don't. Uh, this is a proposal the way we, we think yeah. we should. How, how would you do yeah, but, but this? Yeah, but this see, is, this is the problem, right? So see, we should design things to do one thing and one thing well, okay? What is the, the cluster claim? 
is for a cluster, right? Yeah. And we, we will define a CRD. So you should not, uh, let's say, uh, confuse yeah, but... because you are now confusing the claim with the template. So that is two things you're trying to do and that's wrong. Yeah, but how, you're hey, overloading uh, information that is not needed. Um, but I think it's uh, okay. Sorry, there might be some background noise. I'm taking the call from from the outside. Uh, but how we understood so far, I missed the last meeting. But uh, I think so far, what we have proposed in this discussion says there will be a cluster claim which is coming over O2 IMS, right? Which is more uh, in O cloud provider agnostic, right? And then that claim will include the cluster template reference, right? And that will be a custom that, resource. That should not be, then we should create another input. You should separate it. Because you now you're- to call it, uh, Do you have a resource already called cluster claim? Or a bit, because this was- No, I'm defining, I'm defining a, a cluster claim, uh, but uh, which is basically irrespective of O2 IMS and stuff like that. It should yeah. not be dependent because, so what a, what I'm because trying to get the, to is, in, see, yeah. the problem that we have with API modeling in general, right, is that we are trying to combine too many things in the same thing, which means that you are going to uh, collide information that is not really needed, right? So you're basically making it more complex. So in other words, a claim should be for a cluster, right? And that's it. And if you need other information, so for example, I'm even advocating that the site is actually a context parameter that is not, see, if you create a cluster, the cluster itself doesn't really care what site it refers to, right? It basically, it's a property of what you what you instantiate. The guy that instantiates it needs to know it, but, no, but the it, cluster it, itself doesn't. Yeah, but, sorry. But, this is, uh, this but it is, does. This is the information that the, the guy that instantiated is the SMO Focom. And the SMO mm. Focom needs a way here uh, to send down uh, which site you shall deploy in and yeah, which not, and, and what which I'm trying to say is what I'm uh, what, to Stefan, use. what I'm trying yeah. to say is the following. Segment the information into different components, right? So in other words, you will have a site claim, if you will, right? Or what I call a cluster uh, a context, uh, because that's what the context in which you deploy. And then you have cluster claim, right? And they should be separated inputs. So in other words, you, there's nothing wrong with having multiple CRS inputs uh, in a package variant. No, but but wait, no, we, we are not exposing a, a package variant here. We are, we are no, 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 no. So you are giving you are giving the input, right? So what is the yeah. input that you give? You give yeah. a, you want a template, which is a separate resource, right? So a yeah. separate CR. You need a site, separate CR, and then you have cluster specific information, right? So for example, you want to say, I want this version. And so on. No, so forth, right? Right? that is not what we are aiming to do here. What we want to do here is to create uh, an API uh, yes. that is CRD based for uh, sending an auto IMS provisioning request about creating a cluster. Here, I would say that you need one CR containing that auto IMS request. It shouldn't be two or three or five CRs you need to create here just to define your cluster. Why not? It just Why be, not? It should Why not? just be one. Because this what? is the auto IMS interface we need to expose. Uh, and sure, there, but... I don't see that you should have uh, a whole thing that the SMO needs to keep track of and correlate. It should be just- uh, No, it's, uh, it's nothing about thing. correlation. It's basically what we are defining as an API is an API should basically define one thing and one thing well. There's nothing wrong with creating three different uh, instance, uh, three different inputs that, cons that together does one thing. So, okay. and here is, so, 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 so example, right at, or wrong, look, shall we proceed? This is our proposal that we have. We okay. can perhaps call it something else then, cluster request or something. I, I discussed this with Alexis the, uh, last week, and his proposal was cluster claim. I had other. I I I, I thought it could call, be called cluster deployment request. Yeah, but we are not discussing cluster claim. Uh, that name. We are discussing the semantics on how it gets established. Yeah, and and. Uh, what is wrong with having one? See, it's, it's, we, we are see, carrying so, three parameters so here. Let, so, let me give so, you another uh, another uh, analogy what we did, right? So in when we try to uh, create, uh, let's say, the run, right? So we wanted to create one big CR, right? That basically contains everything for the run, right? I can tell you that every release, you're going to change it, 
okay? And so what did we do? We did basically divide and conquer. We said, okay, there will be specific components that do one thing and one thing well, and we divided and conquer. And so what we did is we created a, a concept where if you need 10 things, you basically give us 10 things and we make them work together. And the result of that is that now your API for the nine out of 10 things will remain stable. And if you want to change that one thing, that one thing will change. Whereas if you do what you're saying, what you're proposing right now, we are going every release to change the API. And you have to change so can all I just, the uh, check with that... you. What we have here is three input parameters. One is yeah, today it's to three, the... but tomorrow it's five, and today uh, after no, it's ten, and and no, wait, next day it's... Uh, I I don't. Uh, that is not what I I think here. If you if you just let me finish. Yes. So we have okay. a template reference uh, that is uh, referring to the cluster template. We have cluster template input that is like highly dependent on which template ref you have. I mean, the, the valid key value input that you are, are can uh, submit here is related to which template you refer to uh, and what you are going to deploy there in that template. Uh, the site ref, as I see it, is also very much related to the template because it's only certain sites that supports this template. Uh, you can have a template with uh, uh, very specific hardware requirements that are doing a configuration of certain uh, uh, hardware that only exist in, in certain sites. And that is why we wanted to keep this together so that you can, in an in a easy way, actually we are thinking about it like as a, some sort of a pre-webhook uh, or something, that you immediately can validate that the, the referred uh, template is actually valid to be deployed in this site. So these three parameters are totally tightly related. Otherwise, uh, you cannot uh, you cannot validate that this request is 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 uh, is going to work. You can. Yeah. It's, uh, what I'm proposing is way more flexible than what you're doing, and and so, because so, uh, you're, you're you're right now basically saying key value, right? So you're not even specifying what it is. But tomorrow you're changing it, so that means that you have to change your O2 IMS for every no, implementation no. Okay. of your workload cluster. Yes. So, so, so here. That's what you just uh, said. Uh, so here, this is uh, like the, the key. I, I didn't give an example here, but this cluster template input here is basically um, like a, a YAML fragment that is based on uh, what you have defined here as cluster template inputs. So. Uh, in your uh, uh, template, uh, in this auto IMS section that we propose, where you refer to a certain uh, uh, template name, we also have like a, a, a property here that will define, okay, this is the valid uh, input data. And there I, can, I agree that if, um, if you uh, come with a new package uh, uh, version later, there might be some new input data that you, could, you can provide. But it is still these properties, and, and it will still be. Yes, but then, see, Stefan, this, what this you're just you're just you're just agreeing what I'm saying, right? Because these things should be independent, right? And if you need another thing, your API no, should no. not be your, I, should, your API should not change I mean, because of the fact that these values. How, how will it work if you say that? Is you create the cluster template uh, in, in see, one see, CR, let me, uh, and if, then if you, you look, send in a template input in another CR. How do you how do you correlate those two then? Uh, you need to validate. See, we we, we created a concept of a meta CR that basically aggregates multiple inputs, multiple CR inputs. You can perfectly do that. And with that, you have all the flexibility you need. Look at what we did in Config CR. It actually does all of that today in FU. And we should adopt a similar approach here because this gives you the most flexibility without having you to having to change all the APIs every time. Yeah, but there is a bit of a challenge, right? I mean, with that approach, I understand your argument, Pim. But the problem is, O2IMS doesn't mandate that both SMO and the O-Cloud has to be in FU based, right? And what we are proposing here is a claim or, or anything else to be called it as, but it's just a request that includes the pointer to the actual O-Cloud cluster template, which is internal to the O-Cloud, and that could be in FU based. And then that request will be, uh, will be rendered and then PV will be generated by the NFU operator and that will deploy. And this could include multiple different, like you suggested, the divide and conquer approach where you can create multiple uh, custom resources 
for provisioning a cluster. But yeah, over O2 that's... IMS, yeah. Yeah, even with O2 IMS, you can do so because nothing, predict, uh, even with the CR, yeah. you can basically make but, it meta. But I would, I would, I would claim that I don't understand. I don't see why we, we should make such an O2 IMS API. It sounds very nephew specific. No, it's not. It's it has nothing to do with nephew. It's basically making we we basically did this across the board so far because we were even we changed what we did in our one towards this approach because it gives us way more flexibility. So if I may, if I may, uh, Stefan, I would really suggest you to open the link which I just shared on the chat. It yeah. will it will help you and you will understand what he you know Vim is trying to say. Uh, the shot. Okay. See so today with with the approach that we took, right? Every vendor, right? We don't have to change anything inside of the field to and support config. It. Exactly. Uh, is this a network function config or? No, exactly. This is the network function config. Now, so what this we think? use for, for network function configuration, right? So, but for mm. example, if you have 100 config snippets, you can put 100 config snippets in and they will all merge together. Yeah. And you can uh, have a vendor. This, is, this shall be associated to the network function uh, somehow then, or each network function in no, no, no. So, or, wait, or, or how so just, do you... Just to make it, let me make it clear. We should build a similar meta CR for the IMS interface. Is what I'm trying to say, which is able to aggregate meta multiple CRD. inputs. Yes, yeah, so NF config is a meta CRD at the yeah. end of the day, and this is able to allows us to uh, get multiple inputs uh, to be able to uh, make it more flexible to uh, deploy, uh, to actually create an instance uh, of the specific thing that you need. Okay. Sh shall we proceed then? Shall we park this for a while? Because my, yeah. my next question is then, uh, assuming that we get in this input then, we say we have uh, uh, one or several uh, uh, CRs here for the input request. I is it correct that this still should trigger the, the, the you shall still, you agree on that this shall basically trigger the, the, the package variant deployment? And then you are creating a cluster based on this cluster template. Yeah. And, yeah, and then you provide input data for that one. Yeah. I also, per I personally would think that we should remove kept from the package necessarily. That's that's what we do today. But I think we want to be more flexible going forward. Yeah, so but no, this say, is a proposal for R3. I don't think we do that. Yeah, but we can basically, I, I think we should make it a package, right? Because there's nothing wrong with making it a package. Whether it's using kept as an instantiation is yeah. a detail at the end of the day, right? It's an implementation choice. But we yeah, we, we have quite a lot of things that where we are using kept, right? In in the yeah, but that doesn't mean that I, I mean so any of the design that we do here is not specific to kept because you're not doing anything for kept here. Uh, okay. We... For now, I, I use kept as an example. Perhaps that can be uh, re-evaluated for something else. I like to be concrete. And then um, uh, I have quite some concrete cases where I see that kept is, is fulfilling a, a purpose here. Yeah, but I mean, we can, I, what I'm trying to get to is that if you make it specific and if we change the underlying implementation, it should still work. Anything that we do here should not, should not uh, stop working. Okay, right. shall we shall we take the next step to see what you think about uh, uh, if we if we proceed? Uh, because some we, we we say we have a package here. Um, we we have a package variant we are creating. We are referring to the template based on the the, the input then. So uh, and then you also then get input then perhaps in another custom resource then related to the uh, site reference and the, the input data, right? And, and that uh, input data shall be then applied here in, in this uh, uh, cluster one uh, package deployment instance. Uh, so then the next, uh, the, the next step uh, where I would like to just follow the standard uh, uh, normal cluster creation workflow. Here I basically have not changed uh, anything. Uh, we have uh, come from the cluster template into the package deployment. The package deployment uh, triggers deployment of this workload cluster CR. Uh, here, uh, I, I am using the workload cluster CR node in order to carry the O2IMS uh, data. 
Så det site ref uh, is here and the cluster template input uh, uh, key value uh, all, all that specific instance data is carried here. Um, then uh, I'm I'm doing an uh, here I call it an IMS internal cluster cluster package variant. Uh, this is instead of the cluster copy kind example package that we have in R1 R2. I just kept this now completely uh, agnostic from whatever implementation the IMS would have. Um, but basically, this package variant triggers uh, the creation um, uh, of, uh, of this uh, uh, custom resource, then that is like an IMS internal cluster. So instead of the uh, copy uh, manifest file, uh, we are creating an IMS internal file. And then we are injecting this data um, uh, into that one. And, and after that, uh, we see that then after that, the, the, whatever IMS internal uh, logic then takes off, if it is like uh, um, uh, a Red Hat site config YAML file uh, or uh, uh, something else, that depending on your implementation, uh, that is then uh, going off and, and, and deploys the cluster. Uh, then, I have suggested that uh, uh, also this management staging uh, repo uh, packages uh, shall be then handled here in the IMS uh, side. Uh, in Oran, when we discussed this uh, installation of cluster-wide uh, software components like the uh, CNI drivers or config sync or so on, Yes, that, that should be done by the IMS. Um, it should not be a task for the, the FUCOM and FU side to deploy those the cluster wide things. Uh, and FU should be limited or, or focused on deploying the workloads. Um, so, what we say is that uh, it is a role of the IMS, and that means it should also be in this OCloud cluster template. Then. So, the, the template basically looks very much like the uh, nephew workload cluster example package does today, that you have the management uh, staging resources there, and you would use the bootstrap controller in order to deploy those things uh, in, in this cluster. Uh, then uh, uh, what I have added here then, uh, that I wanted some comment, co uh, comments on, is that the way I uh, see it is that currently then the bootstrap controller it has uh, some I would basically say admin account credentials here because it can uh, deploy things like in the cube system uh, uh, namespace if necessary or, or anywhere. Uh, this admin account credentials should not be exposed to the SMO for command FO. Uh, on the NFO side, uh, if we look into the uh, auto DMS specification. It's just a, a subset of what you can manage uh, via the Kubernetes API that is actually supposed to be exposed to the NFO. So here they're thinking that we should have a user with some relevant role access for AutoDMS. And that will then be used by the uh, uh, NFO part in order to uh, deploy network functions uh, in this workload cluster. Um, and then we have discussed that we are, we, it could also be good if we at least have uh, what we call like a FUCOM monitoring user that could have a view access to uh, all the cluster resources so that you can uh, check, uh, do get nodes or, or get whatever namespace or, or even check the status of, of CNI deployments and so on. So you can uh, uh, at least uh, do that kind of a troubleshooting or, or monitoring that everything is deployed. But not that FUCOM can, shall manage uh, those resources. Uh. Um, and, and then the suggestion is that we, we then have those uh, two users and then we have those user credentials then shall be stored uh, as secrets here in the nephew management cluster so that like Focom can later fetch them uh, and uh, yeah, uh, use them when it does its own uh, cluster uh, registration. Um, but I don't know, the thinking was that this could be done then uh, by this cluster bootstrap controller, that that one could have the logic. Uh, to create these uh, uh, additional roles. Um, I'm open for suggestion here. I don't know if we want to put that in the Bluetooth controller or if we would like to have some additional step here or some additional uh, uh, resource in the, in the staging repo that represents these roles or so then. Uh, 
so I'm basically just described more, okay, what we would like to need, uh, what we would need from a functional point of view. Yeah, but I thought, uh... yeah it's, if you want to, yeah, so I have, a, I have a few questions, but related to this, we should not use the bootstrap controller, <laughs> first of all, because there's a big security hole that we have introduced at the moment, although I created it, but uh, uh, so yeah. the, yeah, so the bootstrap controller are... role yeah. was yeah. only there, by the way, we abused it because we had other issues, it was only there to actually bootstrap config sync. Yeah. We added modules used... to it. We yeah, added yeah, motors yeah, to it, but yeah, it was yeah. actually, it should not, not have been done, uh -huh. right? but we did. So motors should not have been part of that, uh, that package. Mm -hmm. We did it because, but because the way that we want to go is, is to use NF2 infra to do all of that, which means that you don't even have to install anything. It will come when you deploy the workload. So yeah, in other words, I, so towards your, yeah, your yeah. point on using the bootstrap controller, yeah. the answer yeah. should be yeah. no. Because the only way that we deploy stuff on the cluster should be through config sync or uh, equivalent. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know if we take that discussion now. But don't I feel that the, I, I also listened to the previous discussions on this. Uh, the NF2 infra operator uh, or that that customer is. I'm not sure that that works with the way Oron is defining its interfaces now. Uh, I. The way I see it in, in Uran is that you identify a cluster that you need based on your requirements from the network functions you are going to uh, deploy. Uh, that will give you a cluster template with certain characteristics that you would need to deploy. You deploy that cluster template uh, and that template should give you everything and you are not even aware of what, what it is there. Uh, the template, uh, the cluster class template should define what you are going to deploy, including all uh, the additional resources, CNI drivers, uh, 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 interface configuration and so on. And, and then after that, you deploy the network functions that uh, you plan to deploy in this uh, cluster. Uh, but you are not what will modifying things of, apart from that. That will be... Uh, a very strange use case if you now start because it's an NFO use case, right? NFO is going to do the deployment of the network functions, and there uh, NFO has no role in starting to ask Focom to uh, update this, add this, uh, change this. Uh, we don't have that use case um, the way it looks like now in Oran, I think. No, but so for example, I think you're. I think you probably have misunderstood. But so the CNI and there's a bunch of stuff that gets installed uh, during the cluster creation, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that is happening there. Uh, whether you you so, see NF2 infra, you can use in various ways, right? But one of the ways is I, what we have seen, or at least the feedback from a bunch of operators has been that you don't know all the requirements ahead of time for the cluster when a network function comes along, right? So for example, if you deploy a cluster, why should you deploy multis? If you don't have any network function that uses it. Mm. You see? Now, whether you do or not is a choice you have, right? But you we allow it to, to happen. So for example, I today, uh, so we have to install a bunch of stuff I, so for example, today, let's take the following NF deployment operator. We are this defining ahead of time to deploy. But if you, for example, have your own Ericsson operator, that thing is just sitting there doing nothing. So there is all these type of things that uh, would be solved, but that is, I think it's irrelevant for the discussion we are having here, mm -hmm. right? Because separately, I think. Yeah. yeah, it's completely separate. So yeah, I yeah, think, yeah, I, yeah. first of all, I so. Two, two things. The bootstrap controller should only be used for instantiating config sync, and we are changing the credentials in the security meeting. We are basically discussing uh, credential and uh, parameter and, and permissions and stuff like that, because there is a security hole today uh, in the bootstrap controller that okay. uh, we have to tackle. So in other words, if you need specific uh, credentials for FOCOM, right, mm -hmm. you should basically get them through the uh, through that uh, to the mechanism that we are defining it now at the moment it does not exist. 
I haven't been in the last two meetings because I have been traveling, but they are defining a mechanism to get uh, access rights. Uh, it's the security work group. Or... Yeah, there are some people from Ericsson involved uh, there. Yeah. Can you... Okay, I need to look for, for a reference to th that one then. So what was it called, you say? So there is identity management. Yeah. Identity and access management is the, the topic that they are discussing. Yeah. Uh, so basically getting how you get in a secure way credentials and how do you attest so it's basically so we're so they're discussing on attestation of clusters and elements to be able to get uh, access rights towards multi-cluster okay i will have to look at that one i i, I saw mainly they did this work on the um on, on the port shape a, a like an uh, authentication proxy for for porch but that's perhaps just one point. No, 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 no. This is, it's, this it's is, not that. This is identity and access management across the board for Nephew, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. And one of the use cases, I saw the important use case is multi-cluster access, which today we have yeah. kind of uh, ignored, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but so that's, that's uh, uh, comment number one. My question that yeah. I had was related to the point that we are discussing a little bit was, Okay, so today, when we talk about the workload cluster, it's actually a collection of other packages that const that are going to constitute the workload cluster, right? And so, uh, so my question is, I, or what I understood from what you were explaining is that that uh, is what you would like to have. So in other words, the cluster that you are referring to, so today we... We have three examples of uh, such a workload cluster. We have an example of um, OpenShift. We have an example of Google Cloud, and we have an example of a kind cluster, right? Yeah. And so the yeah. so so one is kind, the other one is I think I don't know what uh, OpenShift uses, but it's ACM or something like that. And then we have uh, KCC that is used for uh, GKE, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, the content of these packages are different based on the vendors that they are. Uh, constituting, mm. so I'm, so I, is my understanding correct that that's the approach that you use? So when you refer to the template, you refer to a package that constitute of other packages, yes, that are referred to it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this so cloud cluster template here, I took very much this from uh, the the Nephew workload cluster template for for copy kind. Um, yeah. So if you look, if you look to the implementation as such, there will be probably eight or nine packages so, that sit underneath that so are going one. to be yes. Yeah, yeah. So this one. So this is the one I took, and then I basically saw like this workload cluster YAML. I mean, that is the one really representing the cluster being deployed. This is the one I suggest that we we update, um, like so. So the, on the on the IMS uh, side then. Uh, you have this data then uh, uh, as well available here, uh, so you can uh, get in the the template. Uh, uh, okay, the, the template ref is not really. This is just just defining it itself basically, but uh, the template input data, the template characteristics, and so on and so. Uh, and the template characteristics and metadata is basically used in order to query uh, for this. Then in order for then uh, from an SMO side. You can query uh, for the uh, OCloud nephew workload cluster. Uh, basically, just get this part. This is the important part that is exposed and uh, outside. Um, and and then uh, this auto IMS properties then is what you would need uh, on your SMO side. And then in the can SMO you, side, you you can, create can you go back? Can you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stefan, yeah. can you go back to the previous slide because before you were saying a different uh, thing. If you go back to your previous slide. Yes. Uh, yeah. The one uh, in yeah on the right. So it's your etcd, right? So the one on uh, IMS internal cluster. What is this, and how does it relate to the workload cluster? Mm. So the, so, the one at the bottom left. Uh, so the cluster dot yeah. this. Yeah, the one at the yeah, yeah. yeah IMS I, internal cluster. Yeah. yeah. So and then uh, you have workload uh, cluster. Why are what is the the difference between those? Yeah. So. So this one, uh, IMS internal cluster, is there instead uh, of uh, uh, 
this one. So here uh, we have the, the cluster copy kind uh, uh, CR that is then uh, generating uh, the, the, I mean, and that package in, in internally then. Okay, now I have updated this uh, for, for the UTIMS case. But basically that one generates this uh, uh, kind uh, cluster uh, class then. And, and here currently you have the, the, the kind uh, copy class uh, here in, in this uh, package. But this is, uh, currently this is this uh, um, uh, copy kind uh, cluster uh, package then that is referred uh, from or, or instantiated from this uh, package variant or in the original case then in this package variant. And so this, this cluster copy kind uh, is the package uh, that is creating the actual copy management file. Uh, but it is also having uh, all those additional things. So uh, the, uh, the workload cluster YAML is referred here, right? As a local config. Um, and you have the apply, apply a replacement in order to inject the data into that one. So the thinking here is that you have the same approach, both on the SMO side and on the uh, IMS side, that you have the workload cluster YAML here to, to carry the, the input data. So that is where we are handshaking. And then whatever you have southbound, if you have copy, uh, copy kind here, or, or sorry, copy to IMS as a cluster class on the SMO side, or on the IMS side, you have an un other internal cluster class, or you have something completely different here. You could have like an um, uh, ACM site config YAML or something that is uh, specific uh, for Google or so on. Uh, but you would still be able to do the same thing, right? I mean, uh, you could uh, uh, get the injection from uh, this side and then uh, uh, push it to whatever in, in like um, implementation specific underlying uh, manifest files you have down here. So I'm I'm still yeah. confused, right? So so first of all. I don't understand why you need an IMS because the ins the implementations of cluster most likely are going to be vendor specific, right? So you will have a Red Hat uh, OpenShift one, you will have a Google one, you have a Wind River one, you have. So the that other is what one. I am uh, uh, trying to show here. Then, when I say IMS internal cluster package variant, it points to a package that is deploying an IMS internal uh, CR or CRs then. Uh, uh, why, do, uh, why do we need that? What is the value of that? Um, I, I'm not saying that we, we must have, it's, it's, this is, uh, I'm just leaving this as something that will be uh, up to the IMS provider to decide. I mean, if you want to do it some other way as an IMS provider, these parts uh, are hidden from, from FUCOM. But what FUCOM is agreeing on is basically what is coming in and out from this workload cluster CR. That is where we are handshaking, that we are aligned on the workload cluster CR and the, and the content of that one. Uh, so, that other are, words, yeah. Yeah. so the IMS internal is, is, so just yeah. to make, if you, sorry to interrupt, but so the IMS internal is basically not, I mean, it's just an example, but it's not, yes, we are not defining that CR as such, right? So yes. Exactly. Okay, so the only yeah. thing that that you are referring uh, that is relevant to you is uh, in your proposal is the workload cluster CR that is uh, uh, used there, right? So that's yeah, kind okay. of the thing yeah, that yeah. you that one we really want to have. Uh, that should be aligned mm -hmm. uh, between SMO and uh, uh, IMS. Uh, then, but then like. Okay, now I am exemplifying also the management staging with the way that it works with in, in FU today. But the thinking is that this the, the functionality then to create this uh, 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 cluster global resources, uh, that functionality should also reside on the IMS side. That is the thinking, and, and it should be defined by the cloud cluster template. So in the similar way that you today in the NEFU example, um, uh, uh, workload package, workload cluster package are defining these uh, um, uh, package variants in order to uh, create these things into the um, management staging repo, uh, uh, repo and then trigger via bootstrap controller them to, to, to deploy them in the cloud site. We would need a similar functionality, not necessarily that it must be working in this way, but it should work in, in, in functionality wise, it should be the same. 
Yeah, but I think we are not going to change question, anything in, in our tree with respect to how we do this right now, right? So in other right, words, I, yeah, exactly. I think we should not change anything there, I think, because so can that I ask we have that? basically, yeah. I, so in other words, what you're basically asking, as far as I can summarize, is uh, we have to uh, discuss the API uh, northbound for IMS, right? But basically, you use the package that we have today, and you want yeah. to have a reference uh, of that, like we do today, but we have to change a few parameters there, potentially yeah, yeah, yeah. to, and okay, we have to discuss that. Right? But, yeah. okay. And, and then okay. Uh, for now, then, or it can be, is it okay to use this bootstrap controller yeah, to, I mean, I think to we, integrate these I would... uh, users for now? I would propose what we have right now. We just leverage yeah, what yeah, we yeah. have right now. We don't no, change that's... it, but there are some things that we are going to improve in that space. So, but I don't think that's why I think we should try to keep the the presentation or the things focused on the changes that or uh, that we are trying to have yeah. compared to what we have right now. Right? So, so I was trying to more do it the other way around, or to focus on what we what we would need to do or or not need to do in R3 then, You're like trying to keep as much as possible uh, intact and, and focus on just some changes that we uh, that are absolutely necessary. Then. Okay, okay, yeah. Let's, Ravi, uh, have some questions. Ravi? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks. Um, so I'm just trying, I'm probably missed the flow from, you know, that you when you get the, um, the cluster claim in which you have a cluster template ID, how do you map that template ID to the specific package um, that has all the kind of other packages that needs to be um, uh, that needs to be provisioned in the cluster I probably missed that step somewhere is that is that the IMS operator is it the, oh, okay out to IMS operator that does this uh, kind of mapping from the template ID to the specific uh, package that you want to choose because mm -hmm. what I understand is the template ID itself is uh, somewhere it's it's a um, it's somehow created yeah. by the operator that's vendor specific and so on. And it's discovered at the yeah. FOCOM level. And then you are kind of uh, pushing it down based on the orchestration requirement. Right? So so this uh, uh, cluster template ref is what the FOCOM side needs to know about. So basically, if you have an OCloud cluster template here, uh, OCloud cluster template one, then uh, as a, as a pre-step then, before you can send down this uh, deployment request, uh, Fucom needs to have, we can say, discovered these cluster templates, like from the catalog uh, on the um, IMS side. Uh, and then keep a record internally in Fucom about, okay, which uh, OCloud cluster templates uh, exist, which uh, cap capabilities do they have, and which uh, ref uh, name shall I use in order to deploy one. Um, and I, I have some slides later on, on how we were thinking to do that part then in Fucom. Uh, to to store basically the representation of the templates then up on the Fucom side, um, and uh, what Fucom needs to know about then is particularly this OCloud cluster template uh, one that name, and as I see it then that could just be the the name of uh, this example package. So if you have in the in the uh, uh, nephew case and you have this, uh, 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 oh sorry, yeah. I have it here. The nephew workload cluster example package. I mean, that, that is the name that you would uh, then. Then here you could have another example package for um, uh, VDU deployment in OCloud One. So OCloud One uh, VDU deployment uh, as an example package. And then uh, that is the name you would need to refer to them. And, and in order to have a, a sync between the, these, then, I suggested that uh, in, in the package on the cloud side, in the template then. Uh, so if you say we have this uh, nephew workload cluster template, if you now make it cloudified, uh, we add this piece uh, here where you then include this uh, uh, name then as a ref so that it, it becomes like an invariant name. It's not like uh, a revision specific or, or porch uh, specific. So it's a uh, invariant uh, name you have that shall be referred. And that is the name that the SMO side shall onboard. If you query for this package, you, you onboard it, and then you create the corresponding uh, mirroring SMO workload cluster package uh, on the SMO side, where you uh, uh, contain this cluster template ref. So that you, then the SMO side 
can uh, uh, deploy this package uh, on, on its own side and then use this OCloud nephew workload cluster then uh, as the reference uh, in the O2IMS uh, interface. So then here then, basically in this example then, uh, when we send down here, you refer to an OCloud cluster template one. Uh, that one is just uh, triggering or referring to a kept package or whatever we will have in the future then as a, as a package here uh, with the name OCloud cluster template one. And that package is basically for now uh, following uh, this structure. Then. So, and, and after, because of that, after that, uh, once we have just uh, uh, pointed out which uh, templates shall I use and which input data uh, shall I apply, uh, after that, uh, it's more like business as usual then uh, for a nephew to deploy this. Okay, so there's one to one mapping. That's what yes, I understand, yes. right? Between yeah, the template. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And also, I was going to the slide just today. You had uh, basically an assumption that uh, there is uh, there's inventory in the focom, right? Because they said they said we are assuming this particular the o cloud registration use case is already mm -hmm. done. Is that an assumption? I'm not, I'm not sure if that will be planning that for R three as well. Because yeah. I'm assuming that when you are discovering this template IDs, you need to kind of correlate with the inventory that use case right yeah exactly i i was thinking about like in r3 uh, for instance the, the different templates that we could basically like just um, uh, design them manually so you you don't do some uh, uh, querying or discovery and automatic uh, generation of templates i mean I see that that should be possible to be done uh, long term uh, on the SMO side. That you the query for a template on the IMS side, and then you basically generate whatever you need on the SMO side. Uh, but I think that initially in R3, it should be okay to just uh, uh, design the templates so that they, they are still matching one to one. Then you have a template on the IMS and a template on the SMO, uh, but you. Uh, you basically design them manually and onboard them uh, individually then, on each side. <coughs> and then we can evolve this then uh, uh, onwards then via the inventory API. Okay. Okay. And just last question. So the cluster yeah. claim is actually a part of the specialization that happens in the, in the by the FOCOM operator, right? The cluster yeah. the claim. The, 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 exactly. The, the task for the FOCOM side, um, I ha have some coming slides on that, will basically be to generate the cluster claim. <coughs> and, and then in that uh, cluster claim CR, then you shall refer to the uh, OCloud cluster template you want to deploy on the IMS side. I don't think you have to do that, but it's, we'll discuss that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Another important part I, I heard you discuss uh, also related to cluster registration in, in the meeting uh, um, last, uh, what was it? Or it was two weeks ago, perhaps now. <coughs> and now we are running out of time, but you can take a look at this offline. But basically, I was thinking what shall happen once you have uh, finished uh, doing the deployment? Uh, as I see it in this cluster claim, uh, this is the deployment request. Uh, so this cluster claim uh, should be uh, monitored by this auto IMS operator so that like you, you monitor the progress of the internal IMS logic uh, and what is happening and uh, that you are succeeding with the deployment. You are monitoring the, the progress of the bootstrap controller as long as we have that one uh, so that like all those uh, global resources are also uh, successfully deployed and I think that this uh, uh, like the, the the sequence of events that is happening when uh, when you are doing these things should be reported up uh, towards the cluster claim so that yeah, you can see okay how far have I come with this uh, uh, cluster deployment so this is like the the request uh, and here you can track uh, how the request is proceeding uh, but then what we said in the last meeting also is that once this one has finished, then it is done. Uh, this one is only purpose for provisioning. Uh, so then when this one is done, then the, this uh, OTMS operator uh, shall create um, uh, an OCloud infrastructure inventory object uh, for the cluster. So, yeah. Sorry, 
Uh, sorry, I have to interrupt you. It's already six right now, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I will request is that there are still comments on your old slides which you presented last week. So either I, I recommend you to just put this slide also and upload it and give me the link so that I upload it. Uh, I change it in the in the meeting minutes because there are certain comments which I made on your previous slides which you presented last week. Like, yeah. Uh, and so I would request I, you to just reply to them also there. I so I have replied it to some of them, the ones I immediately could. So what I did was that I uploaded this one now like an Ericsson updates a separate presentation. Because okay, so I didn't okay. want to overwrite the the comments on the old ones. So, but uh, the new one has been changed quite a lot. So please take a look at the one uh, that is called uh, Ericsson updates uh, here. Okay, I'll update the link in the drive also. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, can you also put the link in the Slack? the latest one yeah cool thank you Stephen. i know it's been you know senior you've given multiple presentations really appreciate it i know it's taking yeah. some time yeah yeah I, this is good yeah thanks for all the comments so let's proceed mm. thank, okay. you. Okay. thank you thank you thank you bye bye, bye, -bye.